Hi there, my name is Mark, and today we're going to talk to you about the box plot or box and whisker visualization in Sine and Power BI. So let's have a look at a box and whisker chart. I've got one on the screen right here in front of me, and you'll notice a few characteristics straight away. We've got this upper whisker, which is the topmost value we have, a lower whisker, which is my lowest value. In the middle, that big, uh, that big white dot is my mean or my average from our data distribution. But it's actually this box around here. This is really telling me a lot. This is kind of telling me where most of my data resides. This is between my first and third quartile that happens in there. And there's a few other bits of interesting things in here. If we note the line between the light gray and the, la and the dark gray, that's the median. And when it comes to data, if your median is less than your uh, average, you then know that your data is actually skewed to the left. So kind of looking at this, my data is low, my data is quite poor. Most of it is down here in the lower end. And while there's some up here and there are some outliers up at the top, this is kind of telling me that my data is down low. And unfortunately in this case, I've little to do with my home internet speed right now. This is really bad for me. So that's the box and whisker. And a lot of data gets conveyed in there. I want to talk to you about what options you have inside in Power BI to get your box and whiskers up and running. So basically there's two of them. Let's click onto the blank page. You, this is not a standard visual that you get up in here. To get to the box and whisker, you have to go to the app source. So the easiest way of going to that is going to this three little three dots over here, clicking on more visuals, um, get more visuals. This will bring up app source. So if I do a search in, search in here for box and whisker, I can see that two pop up. I've got one by MAQ software, and then I've got a standard Microsoft one. Both of them are actually Power BI verified. They've both got the tick box in here, so they both look good. I've already got them added into my uh, chart, so I won't go doing, I won't go adding them, but you can see them here, how I already have them in Power BI. So let's start with the Mac one. So I click on the Mac one. Here it is. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And over here, this is all the data that I have to fill out, or at least get some of it filled out in there. So I'm gonna go looking at my download speed. So that would seem obvious, put that into my value space. I've got nothing yet. And I'm interested in this over time, so let's put this inside my axes. And bang, straight away, I've got a box, I've got a box and whisker has popped up for me. And this is looking at the speed measurements that we have got throughout the day generating me my average, generating me my first and third quartile, my box, showing where the median is and the top outliers. So again, very simple, very quick to kind of get to in there. Let's see how we get on with the other chart. That was the MAQ one, now we're gonna pop on the Microsoft one. So let's make this a bit bigger again. And now let's look at what we have to fill in here. Now this is a little bit simpler. There's actually more, there's, there's only four values to, to fill in. So let's take my download speed again. We'll pop that into values. This one works a little bit differently. We have to specify a category and we have to specify a sampling. So I'm interested in time. So I'm gonna put that into sampling. Now on the MAQ box plot at this stage, I actually got a result, but we have to do one more thing in here that I have to get something into category. I'm gonna put date into category, okay? And I'll turn around and I'll change that to just one particular day. And here we go now, side by side, I've got my two box plots in action, okay? Uh, 4.63 and over here we are on 4.63 as well. So the exact same date in both of them as we would expect. Which one is better? Well, I like the fact that there's a lot more data visually here for you, even though yes, they both have the whiskers and the box and the average and the median I like the addition of the dots here because it's also giving me that sense of where my data actually is distributed. And you can see in this case, there was a big significant outlier to come up to this point. So really it's all low. That information isn't available to me straight off reading inside in this box plot. So it would look like this one that maybe the uh, MAQ one offers a bit more. Let's flick through some pre-built ones that I've got in here. Oh, sorry, I got my, uh, I wonder what's gone wrong there. I think I've got my uh, dates mixed up, thank you. So again, this is my basic MAQ box one. 
if you start setting the other categories in the NAQ, you get some interesting things going on in here. I'm actually going to narrow this down a little bit to make this a little bit more sensible. Let's just run this for a few days. So now what I'm getting in here is I'm using this box plot side by side to give me my progression over four different days. Okay, and I can see how my internet performance is, well, it's never been good on any day. In fact, looking at the median, it's been progressively pretty low and the high points all pretty much the same in there as well. The 27th, a little bit more varied than the other days. Uh, but yeah, you know, pretty poor overall. Okay, but I like this. This is giving me the op this is giving me some additional options in here. I'm using the value, but I've also set in the dot size, and I'm setting the dot size in something called the distance, which is actually how far away this test server was from me. And that's kind of interesting because you wouldn't really expect that to make a difference in an internet speed test, and sure enough, it doesn't. I mean, I can see up here that there's some big dots up here. Uh, that would have been from far, uh, a server that would have been further away from me than say these dots, which were slightly faster, but a lot closer. So presumably there's a lot of dots down here that would have been closer and down here I got some big dots far away that are poor and small dots. So kind of straight away there's a, a, an extra little bit of analysis depth coming out of that visualization by being able to set the sizes of those dots in there. And then I've actually got a second category axis on the NAQ. So we're looking at that over here. So I've now set everything. I've got my axis in time, my server name, my date, my download, and my dot size, and I'm setting up a legend in there as well. So this now is just taking that distance and actually classifying it to where was that server. So in all of these visualizations, my dots are actually the same size on this one versus this one versus these. So it's simply classifying look what server was it connecting to. This one was in Cork, this is in Limerick, this is in Killeen, this is in Waterford one in here. And again, as you would expect, it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, you can't say that the furthest one was the slowest because, you know, uh, Limerick is coming up the same as Cork here for me. Over here, Cork is doing okay, but so is Limerick, Chalise is poor, etc. And again, not showing you any major correlation, but very interesting, very nice little bit of extra depth to get in there. Looking at a couple of these built on site in the Microsoft Visual, a um, little bit less options in here. Sure, you can you can use the uh, category axis, which is date, to have multiple selections on it. So you will get multiple dates going in here and that box plot. So that's the equivalent of this guy here. But I can't take it any further. This is just me and not doing another variation of the same using the servers, but now I can't see the dates in here. So there isn't actually a way of replicating the second view that you can get in the NAQ uh, box plot on the Microsoft box plot. So that's it. From my point of view, the NAQ one is the better visual in this case. Both very simple to configure, both very simple to use. Um, I think box plots add a lot of visualization capability to uh, Power BI and it's right there in the app store. So go check it out sometime when you want to look at data. Thanks very much for listening. Take care. Bye bye.